but wait, why do you feel so lost? Why do you feel sort of discombobulated? Why do you feel not yourself? You've worked hard for decades, and now it's time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Unfortunately, for some people, actually, I think for a lot of people, the transition isn't always that easy. In my last video, which was about why maybe we aren't doing the things we thought we were going to do in retirement, I got a lot of comments from people saying, but I'm not ready to do anything yet. I don't want to do anything yet. I don't know how to figure out what I want to do yet. Like what, you know, there's a transition period in retirement that I can't figure out. I'm not sure what to do. And this really triggered an aha moment for me because I'm like that too. I had that same experience. I thought I knew what the transition was going to be like, and it was not like that. It took a lot longer for me than I anticipated. Now, I'm sure there are some people who can just leave their career and they're good to go and they can make the transition and there's no problem. There are some people who are lucky enough that that, that is their experience. I had a really great transition. Don't get me wrong. I am so grateful for everything that I experienced. I went and lived on a beach in Mexico for almost three years. That's pretty spectacular. But along the way, there were some more sort of existential transitions that I had to go through. I didn't know who I was anymore. How do I identify myself? When somebody says, hey, tell me about yourself. You know, nice to meet you. Tell me about yourself. What it? What was I going to say? I'd say, well, I just retired and I'm not sure what else to say about myself. What do I do? I don't know. What do I do? I lay on the beach and read a book all day. It's pretty spectacular, pretty amazing to be able to do that. But it's really hard when you have had sort of, you know, your elevator pitch and when people used to ask you, tell me about yourself, what do you do? Oh, well, you know, I'm the manager of this or I do this or, you know, I work at such and such a company and, and it's an easy answer. When you've retired, it just sort of feels like, oh, I'm retired. That's it. Right. And it took a while for me. It took a lot longer for me to figure out how I was going to define myself after I made the decision to stop working. And in fact, this was an aspect of retirement that I grossly underestimated for myself. So let's imagine your first day of retirement. You don't have to set an alarm clock. You don't have to get up and get all dressed up. You don't have to commute. You don't have to do all the work that you've labored so hard doing over the last many decades. Life is good, right? But wait, why do you feel so lost? Why do you feel sort of discombobulated? Why do you feel not yourself? What, am, what are you going to do next? What, what's going to happen? Why do I feel so unhinged? Everything's supposed to be great. Why am I not feeling the way that I thought I would feel? Let's dive into that a little bit and figure out why. And then also maybe some things that you can do to help make that transition a little bit easier. And the thing that I really want you to know is that you're not alone. You're not alone at all. This is very normal. So why does decompression take so much time? Why does it even exist? Why can't we just roll right into the good life and relax? Well, if you're like me, you've worked long and hard for years and years and you can't stop a train going at full speed on a dime. You just can't. It takes time and it takes grace. Give yourself some grace. Let me share my story with you a little bit so you can get a sense of where I'm going with this. I spent almost 30 years working as a professional, climbing the corporate ladder in busy Silicon Valley, a lot of stress in my job, raising two kids, doing all of the things that we do. And the thought that I could just turn that off was really unrealistic. And I knew that. I knew I needed some time to unwind. 
And in the past, I had taken vacations, a couple of vacations that were as long as three, almost four weeks before. So I kind of knew what that felt like. And I thought retirement would take about that long. Transitioning into retirement would take about that long, maybe a little bit longer. But I kind of figured within a month or two, I'd be ready to go. And I'd have a really good sense of what the rest of my life was going to look like. Not the case. It took me a good year, almost two years actually, to really feel like I knew who I was again, to regain my sense of identity, to start to understand my new sense of purpose, which is very different from what it was when I was working. And so why does decompression take so long? And I think there are five major buckets that fall under this decompression label that are worth looking at. The first thing is identity. When you retire, your identity shifts. You went from being who you were to not being that anymore. Your career is a big part of who you are and who you were. Replacing that takes some time. The second aspect is is about routine. When we are busy at life and busy at work, we have our routine. Even if our job changes, it still by and large stays the same. When you've retired and now you live this very unstructured life with all of these choices of things to do, your routine is totally disrupted. Your brain and your body both need some time to figure things out again. You need time to get into a new rhythm. The third aspect, and I think this is a really important one, is purpose redefinition. What is your purpose in life? What is the purpose of your day-to-day being? And often we find a lot of purpose in our family roles, but when you're working at a job for so long, that becomes a very big part of your purpose in life. Your purpose is to, you know, bring home the bacon, so to speak. It's to be a manager. It's to be a good employee. It's to be, you know, whatever it is that you're supposed to, you're supposed to be doing. And when you retire, all of a sudden your purpose really makes a big shift and you have to figure that out again. And that takes time. The fourth thing that we need to do when we're decompressing is to pay attention to the social changes that we're experiencing. When you work with people on a day-to-day basis, you're getting a lot of social interaction, maybe too much sometimes, I know that was for me. But you have connectivity every day to people, most of the time. There are some careers where maybe that's not the case, but you have some sort of interaction with people on a regular basis. And when you retire, that very much changes too. you have to actively seek out that connection and and sometimes that can catch us off guard we don't realize you know for me i kind of want didn't want anything to do with people for a while i was the head of people kid you not that was literally my title i was the head of people for the last several organizations that i worked for and i thought to myself the last thing i want to do when i retire is be more peopley But what I didn't realize was that I actually did need a certain amount of interaction that I wasn't getting anymore. And the fifth aspect of decompression time, this was a big one for me too, was decision fatigue. Now you can take this two ways. And I think I experienced both. One of them is decision fatigue from your prior career from your prior job, all the different decisions that you have to make on a day-to-day basis, even just getting up in the morning and what clothes am I going to wear and what, you know, how am I going to get to work or, you know, whatever, just your day-to-day decisions, but also all the decisions you have to make at your job. The other aspect of decision-making fatigue then becomes okay, now I'm retired and there are all these different things I could do. I have to decide what I want to do. And there's just too many choices. There really are a lot of choices and that can be very overwhelming. The possibilities being endless isn't necessarily a great thing. 
So let's talk about some strategies you might use to help your transition be a little bit more gentle. The first one is to ease into it a little bit. It's not just a switch that you flip. Perhaps if you haven't yet retired, you can ask your employer if you can maybe reduce your hours some rather than you know just retiring cold turkey. Maybe you go to a three or four day work week for a while while you ease into that. And then also start to think about what you are gonna do with that new time that you have on your hands. I've heard some really great advice about starting new hobbies and interests before you retire. You know, is there a bunko group in your neighborhood? Is there, you know, the list is endless of the different kinds of things that you can do, but start doing them before you retire so that you have ongoing activities to fall back on once you do have all this time on your hands. Another thing you can do is try to create a flexible schedule for yourself. Now this sounds a little weird. If I don't have work to go to, isn't everything flexible? Yeah, but what I mean is rather than trying to structure every day or, um, or have it be completely open-ended, what you can do is try to schedule things little by little. Schedule some productive time doing something, you know, fixing up your, your old car or sitting down to learn a new hobby or whatever it is. Schedule some things in, but also give yourself time to relax. Give yourself time to read a book, to take a walk. Whatever it is that you find relaxing, schedule time for that too. And then the flexibility piece comes in is, you know, maybe as you go along, you realize that you need more things to do, or maybe you need fewer things to do, but allow yourself that flexibility is my point. Another way to make this transition a little bit more gentle is to cultivate your connections. Remember when I talked about, you know, how when you're going to work every day, you have a lot of interaction with folks and Retirement can be very isolating. So take some time, take some effort and cultivate some of those relationships. Maybe think, maybe people that you have lost touch with in the past, former coworkers, maybe somebody who's retired recently and you can connect over that. Maybe joining some local groups or clubs or, or volunteer work that gets you out and meeting people and talking to people. You don't have to do a lot of it some of it is a really good idea. Let me share with you just briefly a little bit about my retirement story so that you can kind of understand where I'm coming from with all of this. I was 52, was planning on retiring at about 58, give or take a year or so, and I had just been diagnosed with cancer. I went through surgery and chemotherapy and was just coming out the other side of that when the pandemic hit. The company I was working for at the time was impacted significantly by the pandemic and there was a round of layoffs. So I was faced with the choice, do I do I stay on and try to keep working away or do I take the package from the layoff? and either try to find another job or retire. And luckily for me, my husband had all kinds of spreadsheets worked out and he crunched some numbers and he said, you know, if we want to retire now, we can do it. We're going to have to make some changes. We're going to have to do things a little bit differently, but we can do it. The thought of getting another job, you know, with a bald head after chemotherapy and in my fifties and during a pandemic, was just really, really daunting. And I thought, you know what? Screw it, let's do it, let's retire. So we made the decision to retire. A lot of stuff happened in the meantime. Our decision was to go to Mexico and live there for a while. And the pandemic made that a lot more difficult. So we set up shop at a family house in Washington state rode that out for a couple of months. And then when everything opened back up, we headed down south and proceeded to spend the bulk of the next two and a half, three years on a beach in Mexico. Sounds amazing, right? 
storybook ending, no problem. And it really was wonderful. But what I didn't realize was how much of my identity was wrapped up in my job, how much of my purpose was wrapped up in my job. And I just felt really sort of untethered from everything when that happened. And it took me by surprise. I thought, you know what, I'm going to have some margaritas and eat some tacos and sit on the beach and read my book and everything's going to be great. And it was for a while. And then after a few months, I started to feel really like, what's going on? You know, what, what am I going to do next? I felt this pressure to do something next. But you know what? I wasn't ready to do something next. I hadn't decompressed yet. I hadn't gotten over all of the stress yet. I needed time to figure out who I was without the job. I need to figure out, needed to figure out what my purpose was without the job. And this might be easy for some people. I'm sure it is for some people. For me, it wasn't. It was difficult. And so my point is, don't underestimate how important that is. You may be really excited to stop working, but that your purpose and identity can be so wrapped up in the job that you do that when you don't have that anymore, it can feel really scary. So if you're about to retire, or even if you're thinking about it, you know, years in the future, or even if you've already retired, remember that this doesn't happen the same way for everybody. There's no playbook on how this happens. I've given you some ideas and some steps and some things to think about, but it's different for everybody. Think about what it is that you need. Think about what it is that you want. And if you don't know yet, that's okay. It's really okay. I promise it is. Give yourself some time to figure it out. Be patient with yourself. Take some time to figure out what your next big passion is going to be. But most of all, enjoy the journey of rediscovery. And if you want to hear a little bit more in depth about my journey to retirement in terms of going to live in Mexico and what that was like, I, I learned a lot of lessons. I learned a lot about myself and it really changed me. Check out this video next and you'll get the bigger story. The big message here, the big takeaway that I want you to have is that it takes time to adjust to big life changes. Retirement is a big life change. Give yourself some time and space. Don't rush anything. Don't force it. If you want to be busy, be busy. If you want to relax, relax. If you want to do a little bit of both, do that. There is no one way to do this. There isn't even two or three ways to do this. There's an infinite number of ways to go about your retirement transition. Do it your way. Think about it. Put some thought and energy into it and have a great time. I highly recommend it. It's pretty wonderful. <laughs>